So welcome back to another campervan vlog. And if you haven't watched any of my campervan videos before, then I'll give you a heads up. This is a self-converted campervan and it's a Mercedes Vito. We've had two in the past, which were Mazda Bongos, but this we just prefer so much. So I'll leave a link to the playlist below if you want to check it out. And we'd already been to France in August and we never had time to go to Paris and I'd never been before and I really wanted to see what it was like. So once we got there, we headed straight to Somme Air. And this one has got service stations, it's free, and it's very, very peaceful. And it's got a lot of sad history as well with all the trenches around. And here's our new bargain of the month. And they're winter tires with alloys, and it was 150 quid on eBay for all four. So then we headed straight to Paris. We looked for the closest campsite we could find to all the main attractions. You can just see the Eiffel Tower in the distance. And then we put a side awning up and a victory sip of an early Christmas present. Oh, it works. Did it bend? <laughs> it didn't bend. There you go. Fredder. Oh, so did it. I'm having it. It's nice that, that is very nice, you've got to try that. So a bit more about this campsite, I can't remember the name of it but I'll leave a link below. But it was a great spot that backed right on the River Seine, we saw loads of people running past. But it worked out 101 euros for two nights and that included electric, the dog, immaculate toilets and showers, which I think are hard to find when you're camping. Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without Pringles. Oh yeah. <laughs> Got a van full of toys. Fresh out of batteries. But still making noise, making no And we were here for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And we were gonna have as close to a Christmas meal on Christmas Eve, but the fridge was so cold that it froze all the meats. So I made a gnocchi pasta, and I forgot the only thing that wasn't frozen were pigs in blankets. So we thought we'd just do a Ross gravy maker sandwich with pigs in blankets, stuffing, and gravy in baguettes. And make it ahead for Christmas Day lunch. It worked out well. Now, one thing I must point out, most of this video is filmed on my new Samsung Note 8, but I just didn't want to get my camera out all the time. Oh, we've got to go there tonight. We've got the time. I think we should go. I'm up for the walk. Yeah, it's only eight. You're filming me. On Christmas morning, as soon as we woke up and opened the camper van door, we saw this Christmas robin. Did you not like your Christmas present? No. Did you not like it? He looks nervous. Oh, he's shivering. So we're in Paris, why not do some more walking? Because this is what our holidays are usually all about. Sandwich. So I'm looking forward to it. It smells very good. Oh, and, and it's in a CD baguette straight from Tesco. You've got 
Lago de Senosei. in Paris was up, see another veto, and then a fleeting visit to Versailles, which was annoyingly not dog friendly. And I think two or three euros per 15 minutes in the car park, which was extortionate, but it looks very impressive. But as soon as we left, we really struggled to find any open campsites because it was out of season. So from now on, we're using free airs, and I had to use several apps on my phone, which again, I'll leave below. And the first one was near Orléans. It was a rather simple one. You can see a water facility in the distance, but you had to get a token from the mayor, but we didn't need any of that. And here's my first crock of the holiday. These are just great to cooking camper vans because they're quick, cheap, and they taste all right. It's usually bread, ham and cheese. And that was breakfast done and on the road we go again. Something that was a complete pain in the backside, which we didn't expect, was to change our camping gas bottle because it's a French company and all the places we went had Claire Gaz, Prima Gaz and Leroy Merlin completely refused us because we never got the bottle originally from them. But after about two or three hours looking for a place, Brico Marche saved the day. <laughs> then to Clermont Ferrand. I'm probably not saying these places right. Again, a free one in the middle of a village, very quiet with three of the motorhomes. And this was the first time we saw snow there, but scenic as it was, it was bitterly cold. Oh, Just using my mirror. And breakfast were sausages. Next up is St. Laurent de Var. This was the closest we could get to Nice because it was out of season and we'd driven there on the evening and woke up to this. But secretly, there were only about five spaces for motorhomes. But we then thought, maybe there's not going to be a problem because ours is much smaller and shorter than the height barriers. And now for Monaco. The only thing I knew about this place was Grace Kelly. It was my fiance that kept going on about Formula One stuff. I hadn't got a clue. But make sure you dress nicely because just walking around in camping clothes, I started to feel like a scrubber, which was not cool. And there's loads of posh shops, very expensive boats. And although this meal was delicious, this was the most expensive burger and chips not on a plate for 32 euros between us. It was nice, but not that nice. And as sick as it sounds, I did want to see where Grace Kelly died. And it was this very jagged road. And you can see the pin mark of where it actually took place. So I told you how we couldn't find any campsites. We desperately wanted a shower. So we tried our luck with the total service station, just like we did in August. And thank God, two euros for 20 minutes. This was heaven. It even had USB cables to charge your phones and a pizza hut. And then my father-in-law recommended a really good air in St. Raphael. And I really did like this place. I know it's essentially a car park, but the fact that it's socially acceptable there and it's free made us feel at ease. And it is safety in numbers, isn't it? But luckily, because our van is shorter, we were able to get under the height barrier. But you know the funniest thing about Europe is? What? It's a little different to I mean, they got the same shit over there that they got here, but it's just, it's just there, it's a little different. Example. And in Paris, you can buy a beer at McDonald's. And you know what they call a, a quarter pounder with cheese uh, in Paris? 
They don't call it a quarter pounder with cheese? And what do they call it? They call it a Royale with cheese. Royale with cheese. That's right. What do they call a Big Mac? Big Mac's a Big Mac, but they call it Le Big Mac. A Le Big Mac. <laughs> then the further we drove south, we really did struggle to find airs because we just don't really like being inland. We'd rather be by the sea. What are you doing, you little rascal? Me? Cuddles. Oh, you don't look impressed. But annoyingly, one of the apps told us that this air had a shower, but it didn't or it's been removed. So we parked in the car park opposite. Again, it had a height barrier and it was perfect to take hands for a walk on the beach. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> <laughs> My eyes are spookily huge. <laughs> we had planned to go for a walk around Marseille, but we couldn't get any decent access. And with all the docks, it felt a little bit like Liverpool. Then it was tricky to find somewhere for New Year's Eve and we were still on the hope that we'd find a campsite but we didn't. But if you've got a camper van like us, Martigues was brilliant. It's right by the sea, there's about three car parks, the most home side you do have to pay for and Hans made some new friends along the way. <laughs> He hates going in the sea, but we make him by throwing sticks in there for him. So when it got dark we went to have a peek on the air side which was just next door to where we were parked but it truly was like a tin of sardines not something that we'd enjoy and again this is a fishing town I thought it was very quaint but this fun burger restaurant left me curious so any comments are welcome of what you think makes a burger fun and then for a low alcohol tipple yeah I didn't pay attention to the percentage on the back of the bottle and some New Year's Eve gnocchi Am I doing your heading with this yet? <laughs> Couldn't resist. Pinching a punch of the first day of the month, no returns. <laughs> Got that on film. <laughs> Come in for snuggles, Hans. Come on. Yay. And oh, you can't have Maltesers. No. Now we'd got the coast out of our system for a bit, so we thought we'd do some sightseeing. And the first place we went to was Pont du Gard. And it's a very well known ancient Roman aqueduct, but it's had some renovations in the last few centuries. And just walking around is dog friendly, but because it was New Year's Day, it wasn't technically open. But we could still get in for free and walk around and check it out. And we'd been given a heads up from family about all of the really old graffiti there that people had been chiseling away. We were hoping to see some really old stuff, but the oldest I saw was about 1895. But it's cool to do a bit of time travelling in my head and just imagine someone doing it. And then next is Carcassonne or Carcassonne. And we could see this from the road back in August as we were heading towards the Med. And it looked awesome and it's a medieval village. In fact, it did feel a little bit like Battle of Hastings to me. But it had quite a few boutique shops open, not the kind of places that we'd go in, but it was a lovely walk. And this was our first Nutella crepe. And we actually found some really cheap places on booking.com that weren't far off the prices of Airs or Paris campsites. So we drove all the way towards Bordeaux for my birthday and stayed at this Domaine de Ferret Spa. But nothing was included apart from the apartment. But the fact that it was by the sea, it had a shower, it had a kitchenette, it was a deal breaker. 
Oh, Hans is excited. Oh, this is fancy. Coffee maker, get in. Free water. <laughs> so we had a smidgen bit of luxury for a couple of nights. Heating, a dining table, and a fancy headboard that I almost considered making before I made my palette one. It was very nice, and I took a few ideas from it particularly all the sliding doors, because I do want to make my own sliding wardrobes at some point. <laughs> Hans, you're not going in the shower, don't worry. Come on. Come on. When are you not going in the shower? Off! 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 But because we only had a few days left of our holiday, we needed to get the all clear from a vet, so it was okay to take him back to the UK. And we've done this twice now, and it's cost us about 40 euros each time. And I didn't film much, but they checked the weight, they have a feel around on his belly and give him a tapeworm tablet. Almost 13 kilograms. And we had a lot of dirty clothes as well. So we took advantage of a local laundrette, which conveniently had a pub next door. So we're on a new day and we're particularly excited because we're heading to a dog-friendly L'Entricot restaurant, which serves delicious steak and chips. And this is in Bordeaux. Apparently all the reviews say you must get there early, which we did, but we didn't want to be the first person in the queue and the queue went all the way around the place. But thankfully it wasn't that bad because everyone's just queuing for it to open and it must have so many tables. So we started off with this rather nice walnut salad with some bread on the side and then I ordered a cappuccino. Now something I don't like about French coffees, I like big coffees that keep me awake. I don't like fancy things like this with loads of cream on top. So I focused on the wine. And then here is what it's famous for. Steak in a secret sauce, which I think is ginger, coriander and butter with loads of chips, which I think are unlimited. And it's a fixed menu, which is about 16 euros each, which I thought wasn't that bad. But hands had to be under the table, so we got the leftovers as soon as we got out. Sit. Oh, sit. And then the most polite toilet I've ever experienced, a musical toilet. And then on our final proper day, we went for a huge coastal walk and found this bottle with some creepy looking shells. What are these called? I'd love to know. Look, it's come out again. Ugh. So we thought we'd take it back to the sea, but then something totally unexpected happened. <laughs> and then while we're walking home, I found this library or community centre which actually had phone chargers on the outside. So that's pretty much it for this holiday. We did a really long drive to Dunkirk so we could just sleep there for the night before we caught the ferry in Calais. In fact, all the airs are actually closed. And then here's Hans getting scanned to come back. Hello, Anne. Hello. <laughs> and we're in England. So if you've got this far, thank you so much. I hope you all had a fantastic Christmas and start to the new year. And hopefully I'll see you very soon with a DIY project. Bye.